Hello, everyone. This is Phil Yeager, and welcome to my podcast, CPA Review and More. And today, we're going to stay away from CPA Review, and we're going to talk about more. In fact, it's always fun to talk about more versus CPA Review. And by the way, this course, my course, is the one that sponsors this whole thing, Yeager CPA Review course. By the way, it is the best course out there, and I must say, I'm not well, I'm biased, you know, but no, look into our course, right? By the way, let me tell you about the CPA exam. Number of people taking it is dropping down. I don't know. Were you aware of that, Greg? I'll introduce you in a second. All I, right? I, I heard about, I heard that uh, not only were people, less, fewer people taking it, but more people were having a harder time passing it. People well, are, we can talk about that. People are, people are losing their drive and getting dumber. Those are the two trends uh, well, we're seeing. I think the AICPA is getting dumber, but that's another well, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that. But anyway, my guest today is Greg Kite. All right. Does anybody ever tell you to go fly one? All the time. That was <laughs> that was every every recess in that fourth was a grade. Sick joke. That was, <laughs> uh, Greg is unique in that he is a CPA, but that doesn't make him unique, really. All right. But he's also a comedian. Okay. All right. And by the way, Greg, are we going to see you on any shows this year in the fall lineup? Uh, no, not this year. I, I actually have a, a regular month. It's basically turned into a monthly show here in Utah called Comedy Church. And we're, we actually have been in talks about filming a pilot for Comedy Church. Uh, comedy Church? Is that because com- of the, did you say church? Like Yeah, the- comedy, comedy Church. Yeah. Now, what, a, what, why'd you call it Comedy Church? Uh, two reasons. One, we always have it on Sunday night. And two, it's a comedy show about religion. Every single comedian that has any jokes at all has some jokes about God and or religion. So we bring them in. They tell their jokes about God and religion. And afterwards, me and my co-host, we interview them for uh, for a little bit. And just uh, we have a fun time talking about how religion has intersected with uh, with their lives. So it's a to- are you, totally are different. You a religion? Are you a religious person? No, I'm not. I used to be, used to be very, very much so. But, uh, but I, I have, uh, I have, I'm, I'm the lost sheep. So that's, uh, so how's your, so, how's your flock going? If I may ask my, the comedy church flock. Fantastic. Yeah, it's going, great. it's going wonderfully. So anyway, Greg is the first CPA that I have ever met who does comedy. Okay. And we'll get into that because I think it's, but let's talk about the real exciting stuff. And let's talk about Jeff. He went to college, obviously, right? Yeah, wasn't Greg. One, Greg. Wasn't you, that, you we, know, ta- wait, we talked about it before. You said you're going to accidentally call me Jeff. You totally just... T- I couldn't <laughs> Jeff. I'm sorry. I'm That's okay. I'll put, a, I'll put a name tag That's on right. real quick. You'll rename yourself. <laughs> yeah. You don't know what I went through this morning. I had hey, a bad morning. Dude, dude you, don't, you don't have to tell me. I never... I, if, if I've met somebody a hundred times, I still never expect for them to, to remember my name. So yeah, it's all, it's name. all good. It's, uh, it's so all it's good, Dave. Jim Kite. No, it's, uh... <laughs> it's all right, Dave Yeager. Let's keep right. going. They can call me Phil. Uh, Craig. Craig. I got that Craig. right? Good. Yeah. Got Craig. Uh, yeah, you got it out. Anyway, Craig is not a graduate of one of those online universities. So he didn't go to the University of Phoenix. Nope. Correct? Correct. Yeah. Yeah, he wanted to because he wanted to start a football team there at University of Phoenix. Correct? They, they 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 should have one. Seems like they've got a, a large student body to, to draw from. <laughs> they so do. They it's do. harder to have practice online than it is on a field, but you know what? Is it is, is it true that you can basically well, I don't want to say that, they're gonna end up suing me. All right. Yeah. So <laughs> no, but I listen, I have I have enough, I have enough uh uh college. I have enough years in college and higher education. I should be a neurosurgeon, but instead I'm a CPA. I actually have a, I have a, a degree in mathematics. I've got, a I, I earned, math. oh. yep. I earned a teaching certification. Did I've you got want to another, what'd you want to be a math teacher? Yeah. Yep. And I was before being a, a, a CPA, I was a, I was a junior high math teacher for 10 years and I, I got out of it cause I, uh, cause I couldn't stand those little bastards. So instead I decided to be a, a CPA. Uh, so, uh, and then I went back on my accounting those degree. little bastards you do? <laughs> Wait, say What's that again? Age? I won't call them little bastards. Oh, uh, 13, 14. I was eighth grade was my, uh, was mostly what I taught. So they, yeah. They could be a pain, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, they, they could. And well, and actually the funny thing was I didn't, I really didn't have too much of a difficult time uh, a, as a teacher with them and with their ornery behavior. Uh, but what, but what I found out and one of the reasons why I needed to get out of it is as a teacher, if I, because I love to be funny, I love to have a good time. If you're deal, if you're the teacher and you're with a classroom of 13 and 14 year olds and you, and you start to have fun, all of a sudden they're all like going, Oh, it's recess. And then you lose them for the rest of the period. And so, and you have to be extra mean to get them back on track and to settle them down. So what it turned out is I just spent all day, every day being you know, just being very, very serious, very business. This is, this is the quadratic formula and you need to know it. So sit down and, and be good and recite it back to me. And that just wasn't a lot of fun for me. So that was so, one of the things so that motivated well, me to get out. How did you get into accounting? I mean, I, why, what made you want to become a CPA? Oh, uh, when, so when I, when I was in middle school, actually, uh, my mom, she started, she's a pharmacist. She started her own farm. She opened her own pharmacy, uh, with some partners and as partnerships tend to do within 18 months, they hated each other like to death. Yeah. And so they, so her partners <laughs> bounced out. She had a vacuum of, uh, you know, it was, it was a attracting and retaining uh, talent kind of situation she had. So so uh, I, I got to, I, I wound up at the store after school, I think right in the uh, summer between eighth and ninth grade. And she's like, hey, you're, you're now a cashier here at my store. And I, I started as a cashier. I started doing the books for her at her drugstore, just that, you know, the real easy stuff back on a 13 column ledger pad uh, in the back room. And, uh, and I did that for all of high school. And I really, really enjoyed the work of just doing the bookkeeping from a mom's drugstore. So when I went to college, it was like, should I do math? Should I do accounting? And I chose wrong and did. Math. And once I found out that was the wrong choice, I went back and did accounting. Why did you say bookkeeping was fun? Which find fun about bookkeeping? Uh, it, it was, you know, it's, it's, it's the, the neatness and knowing that you got the right answer. Cause again, a lot of what I did, and I can't, I can't remember why or what I was doing, but I remember on the 13 column analysis pad, you, you know, you totaled up all the rows vertically, you totaled them up all horizontally, and then you totaled those up. And then if the numbers matched, you go, I nailed it. And just, there's sort of a sense of satisfaction of going, this ledger sheet is perfect. Also, I found out that when I was doing 10 key work, I could almost, I could literally almost do it asleep. And even though like there was times where I, I almost would, it, it was almost meditative or it would put me in a trance, just doing all these columns on the 10 key. Uh, and so um, what I found is I could, I could get myself almost to sleep and keep doing it. And I didn't have to worry about it because again, if the numbers didn't match, they didn't match and I'd know. So I wasn't worried about making a big mistake. The only thing I was worried about is having to do it again. So now, you didn't plug numbers, did you? No. Okay. Not at all. Right, good. No, right. no, sir. Is this a test? No, sir. Never did. Oh, okay. Yeah. This. But, uh, remember, we the code of professional ethics. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm on it. Yeah, it says don't plug. Numbers. Don't plug numbers. I yeah, that's that. in there. That. That's uh, section 63-104-2. Uh, it was dash three. I'm sorry. Oh, that. well, <laughs> well, it, th it kind of it starts in two, and it that really is, hits uh, that's the sweet the sweet spots three. Yeah. You're right. So anyway, were you born in Utah? Is that, uh, where were you born? I was born in Akron, Ohio. Me and LeBron James, both born in Akron, we were Ohio. Born together? We were, we, we were born in, he was in the room next to my mom. That's what I, I was think told. That's great. Uh, and you, you're still good friends, I hope? We, we are. I mean, we've never met. Um, and we were born, I'm sure, at least a couple decades apart. But, uh, but yeah, just tight, tight as as tight can be you so like yeah, bo bo yeah born in born in akron ohio my mom moved out to uh moved me and my brother out to uh, washington state i lived just outside of seattle that was all my growing up i don't don't remember uh ohio at all because i was an infant uh but did most of my growing up in in seattle went to the university of washington that's where my math degree is is from is out there so seattle's a beautiful city you it's, know it, it's wonderful. Yeah. Very expensive, right? Super it is expensive. now. It is now. When I when I was there, uh, like growing up, Microsoft became a thing while I was in Seattle. 
So uh, the east side of Seattle, the east side of Lake Washington blew up and became the super fancy rich place to, to live. But then, and Boeing was always there. So my, both of my grandparents worked for Boeing, but now that it's the epicenter of, of uh, Amazon, it's really taken off because Costco. Yeah. So those are, those are really the big four out in Seattle is your Microsoft, Bo Boeing to a lesser extent, because they moved their headquarters to Chicago. Gosh, uh, in the, I think in the early 2000s. Um, but oh, yeah, by the way, I'm not looking at my watch. There's maybe <laughs> my my I'm wife. Very... My wife went to the doctor today uh, for her a hearing test, actually, and uh, they said they have to stick this tube up her ear. To, uh, and she was so nervous that I, that's what I did before we got on. I, I she also has the worst sense of direction, so okay. I had to. Uh, I uh, you know I, I got the directions from. Uh, Wave, is that, is that what it is? Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, and ways, ways, that, yeah. Ways. That, yeah. So I actually had a drive there. She followed me. Okay. Uh, because she gets lost. I mean, uh -huh. uh, and uh, so, so you're checking your phone for, for text messages going, I'm lost well, again. She scares me when she I'm goes in, to a place. <laughs> I'm in Virginia. Help. Is that what she's yeah. saying? Now, all I think about is insurance, you know. Good, you know <laughs> a couple of times I get a call, uh, Philip, I, uh, I hit a tree or something, you know? Yeah. And being the loving husband that I am, I said, is the car all right? <laughs> <laughs> right, right. There you go. Well, and that's the thing. See, if she knew how to play you as an accountant, she'd be like, hey, just wanted to call. Great news. I was able to find some more accelerated depreciation on our on the asset that is our car. That's the way that's the way you tee it up. And then you're like, you're kidding me. That's fantastic. So, well, I have to honestly tell you that I did not want to be an accountant. You didn't? No. How, how did you wind up as one? Well, and as, as a clearly a very influential one. I am influential? But yeah. You... <laughs> <laughs> Who told you that? <laughs> I, it's just, it just is, it's the vibe coming off you, uh, Phil Yeager. The vibe coming off of me. Yeah. Well, you can't. We no, listen. Call. You can't. Yes. You can't have a CPA exam review course and not not know that you're influential. Well, if you're, yeah, if you're helping the masses get through that, I'll tell you something. I started that course in 1977. All right, when I was 86, and uh, <laughs> no, I I started and we had a live course, live course. I because I I really like standing in front of people and yeah, I would tell them I'm teaching CPA review and I'm. You know, I'm coming up with these examples that just whatever came into my head. Yeah. And I remember at the end of the cycle, someone would come up to me and they say, who writes your jokes? And I said, <laughs> no, I said, it just comes with, you know, what comes to my mind. But I like to stand in front of people and yeah. I do like to make people laugh. So, but anyway, I, uh, I remember I had, I went to the University of Rhode Island. Okay. You want to interview me now? I went yeah. to the University yeah. of Rhode Island and uh, we had to declare our major in our freshman year really wow yeah and it's the old uh i remember uh jackie mason who recently passed away great uh -huh. comedian he was good. yeah yeah and he his big thing is the difference between jews and gentiles you know uh -huh. and he says well you know uh in a jewish household if you have the son is a genius he becomes a doctor all right and if he's not that bright he becomes a lawyer and if he's really all right. I don't want to use the word with the R. All right. Uh, yeah. If there's something wrong with him. He becomes an accountant. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> so I couldn't be a doctor. So <laughs> the side of blood. Uh, law school. Uh, mm, I like business law, but I I couldn't you know do all that research stuff. Oh. So uh, anyway, my mother said, "You're going to be a CPA. You're going to be an accountant because most of the people around me in Long Island, where I live, all right, they uh -huh. the ones who were making the money back then. They were CPAs." Mm -hmm. It was different, yeah. So I said, "Oh God, I don't want to be a, an accountant." She so I started it, and I hated it. I hated it. Oh and no! Second year, I said, "I want to switch into another major." So yeah. Says to me, "If you switch into another major, we're not paying for your school." <laughs> <laughs> so you're you're uh, you were you're strong armed into in, into staying. I think I was a... strong armed and also drugged up. To stay in the oh yeah yeah so but, but no i can't but i came out and i said uh, when i graduated uh I, i'm not going to become a cpa this is all garbage and 
Now I used to, <laughs> you know, one of my, my first jobs was with Seedman and Seedman, which now BDO Seedman. And okay. I worked out on Wall Street and uh -huh. they had a lot of banks for clients. And I remember they put me, they always put you on the audit staff when you first start. Right. Okay? So yeah. I knew, I knew, first of all, I knew the hours were ridiculous during tax season. Yeah. And all right. So what happens? My first audit, we have to go into a bank vault and count securities. Okay. You know, and uh, yeah, just thrilling, uh, yeah. thrilling. And, and you know, back then we had to wear suits. Yeah. And a tie and a white shirt, white shirts. And uh, I'm sitting sweating bullets in this <laughs> lousy vault with another guy who was also, we were considered junior accountants. You know? Yeah, sure. We have, today, I don't think they call them juniors when they come out. What but, are they? Yeah. They, yes. I think they usually call them staff. I think you're called staff yeah. accountant. Yeah. But they used to have, we used to be junior accountants and then you became a senior accountant. Yeah. And then a light heavyweight. It was like a, it was like <laughs> right, a, right. A boxing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So anyway, I was there for uh, two years and I finally got out of there. Yeah. And uh, I wanted to do something else. But every time I went to a search firm, you know, they figured, hey, it'd be easier to place them in a, you know, an accounting firm. We got oh, the mission. Right. And right. I wanted to do marketing. Okay. And they all said, well, it's a you know admirable area to go into and you'll do well, but all right, you'll do better with accounting. Yeah. So anyway, right. that's, so I got in uh, and then I decided just... I just really don't like this. What can I do? Well, I taught a class part-time at Fairleigh Dickinson University in Jersey. Uh -huh. And I really liked standing there and teaching. And I did it part-time. Mm -hmm. And I said, this is what I would like to do. I applied to different community yeah. colleges. And I didn't yeah. have a CPA at the time. And I got a job at a community college, which I loved. It was a small college yeah. in Annapolis, <laughs> Maryland. Probably uh -huh. And uh, I said, this is a great job. Because I was only 27, 28 years old. And the students I had were maybe a few years younger than I was. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Because every, every Thursday, Friday, we played football. We actually played football. Yeah. Is it? Oh, that person is missed call. I get a lot of those. Anyway. So we would play football, touch football, and it was really great. It was more like a <laughs> uh, a family type thing. Yeah, that's cool. Because we had four people that started working at the same time I did. And uh, anyway, then I left there and went to another, a University of Baltimore. Okay, but yeah. When I was at this community college, they made me director of accounting. <laughs> you just, you were successful despite yourself. So, well, but, but I'll, yeah. I'll tell you, I, I get your, your whole trajectory. I get that. And that's, that's similar to me. So I was, I was a, I was a junior high math teacher while I was a math teacher. I started doing stand up comedy. Uh, then I changed my careers. I became a, I became an accountant. I got my, my license uh, as a CPA started. I've spent one year at a firm because in the state of Utah, I think most states are like that. You need to have one year of experience working under the direct supervision of a yeah. CPA. And that was not my See, when I was, when I got the CPA, all right, uh -huh. because they made me director of accounting. So I figured I better take the CPA exam, all right, because who right. was the yeah. director of it? Yeah. So yeah. But when I passed the exam, it was a certification. That's what it was called. It wasn't a license. Okay. So I got my, as soon as I passed the exam, I got my certificate. And yeah. if I wanted to practice, I get a license. Today, okay. the AI CPA has changed their position with this experience requirement. And that's uh, what's actually turning people off. Is it? Okay. With, uh, with the, uh, yeah, because, okay, because I, because that was the thing. So I passed the test while I was, was it, was it what? No, yeah, uh, it was one year, generally one no, year. No, it wasn't, I, I wasn't even done. I wasn't eligible to sit because I had to get my, because I was, when I was at the firm, I, I had just started my master's program. So I hadn't, I, I didn't have my license yet. I'd started my master's program. I was with them for exact. Well, here's the thing. I was with them for exactly one year. And I think most states, they define what a year means as 2000 hours. Yeah, hours. They go so, so I had a, so I was like, I was planning my escape from this accounting firm the whole time. And so two weeks prior to my year being up, I was talking with one of my clients going, Hey, if you hired me on here, I think it'd be great for you. It'd be great for me. Let's make this happen. He goes, boom. I I love it. And I was like, but not yet. I got to have this two, you know, this, this one year requirement He's like right on. And so I planned out when I would give my two week, I planned my to give my two week notice one week before my year was up. 
to give me a week of padding in terms of that hour, just so it was indisputable that I had my year worth of experience. And so as soon as I gave my notice, my, my, my soon to be boss called the managing partner at my firm. And he was like, Hey, listen, Tim, let's stop screwing around. Greg hates working there. I need him over here. How about you cut him loose now? And I'm like, no, no, no. You got a race? I, uh, I did quickly. I did at, the, at first it was kind of a lateral move, but then they gave me a bunch of raises at the, at the new uh, company I worked for, but I had, I had to be, I had to be like, no, I can't leave yet. Cause I got to have my, my 2000 hours. So I went back through all of my timesheets for the year and I totaled up how many hours I had. And I was like, listen, I hit 2000 hours on Tuesday. So how about Tuesdays my last day? And they were, and the managing partner of my new boss, they were both like, that's great. And so on Tuesday, even I was like, well, I, I hit 2000 hours at 1141 AM. So am I coming back? I am coming. Oh, I am coming back after lunch. Okay. I'll see you after lunch. And then I'll, then I'll get, I'll move. Oh, over. Did they make you a lunch when you, no, up? no, no, they, they, uh, yeah, they, they were not my exit, my exit interview with that firm. I think they were just disappointed that I, you know, th- you know, they, they put, they put a fair amount of time and investment into me and to building up my my, uh, you know, how my skills Skills for their firm and, and, and I bounced right out before they really got any return on that investment. So they weren't, they weren't super happy with that. So there was a, there was a, the exit interview was, was a lot of us not saying out loud that we were both kind of glad that they they were, they were, they were upset with me. I wasn't a fan of them. So we, we didn't say that out loud and suffered through an exit interview. And then I left. So well, you're happy now, but, aren't you? Oh, yeah, I, I'm totally happy. Oh, but this is where I was going with that too. So while I was with them, I started teaching QuickBooks classes at a community. Oh, no, sorry. It was the University of Utah's Extension School. Okay. And I loved doing that. It was a blast. Very similar to what you were talking about. You get up and people are like, oh my gosh, this guy actually has a personality and he's teaching yeah. me the most boring topic on the planet. And there's a lot of, there's a lot that comes with that. And, and over the years, I've actually, I do a whole lot of CPE uh, teaching that I do, I, uh, through CPA Academy is one of the, yeah, is no, no, right, right. the main, that's the main one that I teach through right now is CPA Academy do, uh, mostly teach on ethics and fraud, but there's some other topics that get tossed in there as well. So well, there really are no ethics in public accounting. I don't know what they teach you for, <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, there's no I, ethic. There's no ethics, but there's ethics no training. Ethics. People yeah, have to learn it. Yeah, so. Well, you know, you gotta do this. And by the way, uh, how much you're paying us for the fee? Oh, right. You'll get an unqualified. Opinion. Right, exactly. <laughs> oh, that's that's the biggest joke. Yeah, the uh, the the being independent, but also the fact that you eat because your client pays you money. That's oh, uh, we're not client we're, for lunch. What's that? The client with the lunch. No, no, they they pay the firm, and the firm pays your salary, and you go to the grocery store with the money that the that the firm gives you. So you're not in de- you're not independent. That's a it, independent. Well, it's funny. I even I remember learning in the ethics stuff that that we needed as a, as CPAs we needed to be uh, ethical in fact and in appearance. Yeah, right. And the whole appearance thing bugged me because it's like if you're if you're really ethical, who cares if you look ethical or not? Just as long as you are. And then and then you take a step back and go, oh wait, our entire profession, all we're trying to do is appear independent. Because in reality, there's no way to say that we're truly independent independent from a client that you know an auditor that's independent is an irs auditor because they're not paid by the oh, taxpayer yeah, directly if, if you go so, with the irs and they help you and you say hey i'm getting a cup of coffee you want it oh no i'm sorry you can, right i can't take your coffee yeah yeah, yeah. i said what am i going to bribe you with a cup of coffee <laughs> right <laughs> right, right. Yeah. well in utah they that not only would they not take that bribe but they would feel just uh, spiritually offended by that as well well, I have to tell you that I think what's happening with the profession now, because I, I discussed with you, number of people taking the exam is dropping like, uh, you know, it's unbelievable. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and I, I'm part of this uh, uh, approved course providers, you know, with Becker and all these other ones. Yeah. And uh, meanwhile, I, we, we used to meet twice a year, but with the pandemic, we do these on Zoom now. Yeah. And, they did come out with a new exam July 1st, auditing change. And that's okay. because they hired from Ernst & Young, all right, 
a brand new guy to take, make up the auditing exam, maybe the other parts too. So his whole thing is now CPA, it's a practice to do public accounting. Okay. All right. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, that's, that's all. So he, he really, the, this new, you know, the blueprints, they have blueprints now telling you what they're going to ask and that type of stuff. Yeah. 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 Right? Well, they just added, uh, to the auditing part of the exam, a good 20, 25 new blueprints. Oh yeah. Okay. And I was looking at this and I said, God, who knew, who knew? You know, what's the factors for this? And what's the factors for that? And, yeah. you know, and I thought, God, you know, what are you trying to do? Encourage or discourage? Because right. that would discourage people as it oh, is. Oh, absolutely. Well, when I, when I was taking the exam is actually, I got, I, I finished the mm. exam right before I was one of the last groups to get through the exam before they started including IFRS in the, in the exam. And that was, that was a big motivation for me is just going, that's one less thing I have to study if I can pass it before uh, August or whatever it was when I was trying to get through it. So the deal is with the IFRS now. uh, No, what's the deal with the IFRS anymore? (laughs) It's not. Okay. Okay. Nice. Nice. Well, well, but okay. So a couple of things. Uh, I don't know. This is probably just some, some yeah. So taking the exam, how did, how, cause did you take it when you had to, when it was paper, pencil, had to do it all in one. Yeah, We, we had to take all four parts. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was two and a half days. <laughs> uh, and we all sat, uh, the people in Maryland, we sat at the Baltimore civic center. Okay. All right. And uh, every time we took it, if you took it in May, the circus was always in town oh, because you would hear the elephants. <laughs> you know, no. you're, you're upstairs uh, with with 2,500 people taking uh, the exam. Geez. And then downstairs, you hear the, the elephants and all that, and they smell too. Sure, and, I'm sure. Know, but yeah, we took it all four parts. And you know something? Amazingly, you know, people passed the exam. The demand for the exam was really up there. Yeah. Right? They had a good 5,000 people taking the exam twice a year. Yeah. Just in Maryland. Yeah. And that's, that's not even counting DC or Virginia, which is, you know, tri-state right. area. Right. But, uh, yeah, they, they, uh, they, the auditing I made very difficult. And yeah. I, I go yeah. to these meetings only for one reason. All right. Uh-huh. I have a big mouth. Okay. And <laughs> oh, for the meetings when they're like planning oh, yeah, the, the changes. Uh, course for the, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Gotcha. And the rest of them sit oh. there, like, you know, you know, they don't care. All they care about is <clears throat> how are we gonna lie to the students and tell them we have 90% passing rates, all right? And the AICPA does nothing about it. Right. All right. Huh. And, that, well, and then I ethics. And then, yeah, yeah, I say, what the hell is the ethics? <laughs> Yeah. I remember I went out to lunch with the director of examination and I said to him, who do you protect? And he says, well, the purpose of the exam is to protect the public. Mm, so I right. said to him, well, who protects the candidates? Oh, that's not our problem, you know? Huh. And uh, so I said to him, well, you know, I could actually get out of the profession now and, you know, I don't need to work in this profession or any profession, but you know what? I am going to be the, you know, the the talk i'm gonna be the person and it's the students and that's why i got the podcast originally this you know and uh yeah and you know something people don't want to listen to that you know the students i mean i don't say anything really nasty about anyone specifically well i sort of <laughs> yeah i knock our competitors because you sure? they're all, they're, nothing they say on the internet the internet's not regulated uh, no I, no. 91%, not 91% pass rates, 92%. And uh, I say, who believes this garbage? Right, right, <laughs> right. So, and then I, you know, I, I say to the guy in New York, I said, why don't you do something about this? He said, well, we're not here to protect the candidates. Yeah. Uh, so I said, well, God, I mean, they're the ones who are becoming CPAs. Right. right. And the fact is, if, if they do find out that those passing rates are phony, all right, a bright one would say, you know, how come they let that go? That's really unethical. Right. <laughs> and that right. is a new thing. The exam well, changing in two years again. I, I did. I did see about that where, uh, what it like you, you can have like an emphasis. There's like the core parts, but then you can right. be like, you can have an emphasis in tax or an emphasis in, 
uh, I like in technology, I think. Yeah, it's it... IT, uh, tax compliance, or financial accounting, or okay, okay, yeah. all right. But, but you but, take a core exam first. Yeah, right. And then you take your special, your little specialty exam. No, but... no, 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 no. Now, oh. there's actually a seminar today uh -huh. right, that they were going to talk about this because no one really understands. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so anyway, but I couldn't attend. And uh, but well, no, there you, is no wait, you you there. gave up you gave up that seminar for me. Jeez, I, uh, that, yeah, no, I said to myself, Phil. That's why I call myself. I said, Phil, <laughs> I can't cancel out on this guy again. Okay, yeah. just not right. Right. And my there, wife <laughs> said, my wife <laughs> who likes you without knowing him, she says you can't do that again to him. So I said, right. No, I don't want to come across as a real. She's like, listen, I'm having, I'm having ear surgery. There's this no, major, no, no, no there's this, Let's not make this well, no, no, we'll say it's surgery. I'm having ear surgery. There's this major meeting that's going to affect the rest of your career, but you know what you need to do. You need to get on with that Jeff guy and talk to him about his yuck, yuck jokes. Well, I so. was, more, I said to myself, being a kind person, I am right. The heart. I yeah. said, you know, I can't, uh, disappoint Jeff, although his name is Craig. <laughs> right. When I and I looked myself in the mirror, and I said, "Hey, listen, Jeff," because I actually call myself Jeff. Uh, right. And he and 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 then I say back, "What, Greg?" And then I say, "Well, listen, Jeff, you need to you need to tell some jokes when you're on that podcast with Phil Yeager." But but here's what I'd really like to do, if you'd care to take the time, can I tell you my best CPA exam story? I, I'm ready. Is this and a this, joke? Is this a joke? No, no, this is a true story. I used and this to have is, a laugh track. Uh, this is, no, 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 you don't need that. The, uh, this, so, and, and not only that, this, I think this is like a major hack for taking the, the, the test is, and, and here's what happens. So the, the very first, the very first section I take was the audit section. And as you know, you're in there and if you have to, you can take a potty break, but they don't stop the clock for you. So the clock right, is still right. ticking. And I took it at this, I took it at this exam center that also was up at the University of Utah. Was it and, Prometrics at the time? Yeah, yeah. Prometrics. Yeah. Okay, yeah, and, yeah. And it was awesome because, because, you know, about, about three quarters of the way through the exam, I have to go to the bathroom and I go up to the front and I say, Hey, where's the, the bathroom? And she says, it's at the, it's at the end of the longest hall that humans have ever made in the history of humanity it's like that's the men's room the women's room right outside the front door the men's room was like a quarter mile hike so i'm like i'm you know i'm trying to have dignity so i'm not running to the bathroom but i'm like power walking to the bathroom and, and back and i get back in and i and i'm finishing up the test and, and seriously there was whatever the written portion of the test was where you had to, you know, have like a, tell them how you do your auditing task or whatever like that. I yeah, seriously, yeah, my, yeah. I, I wrote my last sentence and I reread it. And I said, I don't think I like how, and I like, I like had to do, you know, back, backspace, 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 and fill in the word again. And as I, my last keystroke of changing the last couple words of the last sentence of that, that was my time and the, and the, the computer shut down and I was going, dang, if I, if I had that time back from running back and forth to the men's room, that was a hundred miles away, I would have had, you know, some, some extra padding to be able to do that. So I'm telling somebody at work about this, about this, this story about how far away the bathroom was and just barely having time to finish the test, which I did pass by the way. So I did, did a good, you know, so, so even despite the, the timeout for the bathroom still passive, but, but just jokingly, she was like, you should, you should have worn depends when you were there. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's brilliant. <laughs> that's brilliant. brilliant. So you brilliant started idea. selling depends there. So I know. So on, so I didn't take her advice. I, well, I must've already taken the other two exact. Cause that's, it seemed like that keep, kept happening to me, but I was at different testing centers where the bathrooms weren't as far away, but I thought that was so hilarious that I was like, my very last section was reg. And I was like, I am buying depends and I'm suiting up and I'm going to go and I'm not going to take a single potty break for this last section. And I think it was the shortest section. And it was the only one of the four that I didn't have to use the bathroom in. But I'll tell you what, you don't suit up like that and not use it. So I for forced myself to go to the bathroom in the testing center uh, just on principle. Uh, and again, passed it. And one of the most embarrassing thing was afterwards, I went to the restroom in the testing center and removed it. And I didn't, I assumed that it'd be just like a, 
one person bathroom, but it was one of the big ones. And I know that people knew that I was taking off an adult diaper in that bathroom. But yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. All that to say that that could be the difference between passing and failing is if you if you uh, wear yourself an adult diaper to take your test, I'm saying it's it's a proven well, method. Well, I don't know if you can do that anymore because they check everything when you come in there. I mean, they they bur- well, they probably have to check the diaper. Yeah, well, but if they do, I mean, I don't think there's any rules against wearing a diaper. Well, no. To um, the, yeah. It's so, like I tell the people, you know, uh, you see my board here? Uh-huh. See big board? You want to do your calculations? Doesn't say you can't take a big white board in there. (laughs) Yeah. Nice. But no, now it's four hours apart. Four hours per part. Wait, per part? Every single one? Dang. That's ridiculous. I think the longest. It's it's, it's different problems. Different types of problems. Yeah. 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 Crazy. That's nuts. Ridiculous. But they give a 15 minute break for each part that doesn't go against the four hours. Oh, okay. Well, that's nice. But. You, if you go to the bathroom, all right. They don't stop the clock. You're, you're out. You finished the exam. Oh, what? Oh, you don't get back in if you leave. That will. Oh, wow. That's, that's brutal. You can leave. Yeah. Well, I don't know where you. You probably can stay around uh, for 15 minutes. uh, Yeah. Yeah. Or go to the bathroom. I think you go to the bathroom. Yeah. But that's it. You know? If you leave outside of the break, you're done. Yeah, See you next time. Yeah. If you have a wow. prune, if you have pruned Danish, you're in deep trouble. I, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, that's all the more reason that you gotta you gotta suit up in the adult diaper before you go. It's really, I'm gonna say that's best practice, and I think you should outline that in your course. The adult diaper, yeah. I don't know if they allow that anymore. You might be uh, right. Maybe you wrote all the FASBs on there. <laughs> <laughs> on the adult diaper you can do that on your on your regular looking underpants at, looking at, looking at, you, can, yeah. you can do that you can do that in your own underpants that's the same they're not they're, there's no uh higher exposure uh and i use that word on purpose uh that that, that, that they have with adult diapers than with regular uh regular draws crazy on security now you know you can't bring a watch in uh-huh right? yeah you know, i don't this is a, this, uh, you know but I mean, the people are under pressure as it is, all right? Yeah. Did you have a clock in front of you going off? Down, yeah, down, it was a, I think there was a clock embedded in the testing software. So it was right there telling you just how scared you need to be at any given moment. Like a bomb, isn't it? Yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah, it's basically like a bomb. So. Now they, uh, so, but the auditing, first of all, uh, usually, how many semesters of auditing did you take? Oh, geez. I don't, I the can't. One, two? I can't, I honestly can't remember. Probably, I think I had to probably take at least two auditing classes, maybe three. Well, most schools have one semester of auditing. Okay. Now you can take a second semester, and they call that advanced auditing. Okay. All right, and maybe people take that advanced auditing in the extra credits to get the one hundred and fifty. Okay. Right. All right, but <laughs> all right, they have made this so complicated. Two courses in auditing would not be enough. You'd have to have oh. three to four courses in auditing. And most yeah. schools don't have that, okay? Right. All right? And then the people who are teaching them this stuff, they all have PhDs. They never stepped inside an office. <laughs> right, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that well, that's absolutely, I mean, that, that was, I remember that being something that my teachers told me about the CPA exam, where it's like, you're gonna study your brains out to have all this book knowledge about all these areas that you're at most going to use a third of the of anything you learn to get your exam and then even after that once you get into your career you're going to find that a people are going to spell out exactly what you need to do and tell you exactly how to do it and 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 b uh the, yeah anything that says it's like a practical portion of the test is so not at all what the real life ac- accounting well, they're is going like. crazy there's a lot of it stuff now on the exam okay digital analytics okay you know and mm-hmm. here we go again all right most students don't get really it in college they're, yeah. they're first starting to introduce it all right so the people they don't know it and well, you know all i'm saying is it turns people off okay yeah absolutely because right? they change it july 1st all right all of a sudden what do you do july 1st they change it 
change it gradually? Hell no, they throw a bomb at you. Yeah. And that's a turnoff. Yeah. And they forget at the ICPA, you know, this certificate is a business, okay? All right. If we don't get people taking the exam or get them through, our membership's going to drop. All right. But now they got people working there who are on a, uh, I think, an ego trip or something. Uh, you know, for, you know, the CPA is a license to practice. But you know what you just said about you can pick a specialization? Yeah. All right. That uh, picking a specialization, I don't think it's the second part of the exam. All right. You can okay. go, for example, you find a firm that uh, you can do information technology in. Now, even if you do that, they don't give you a certificate that you get, you have a specialization in IT. All right. You just do it. Now, right. this is the fallacy, though. The experience requirement is still one year of public accounting or one year working under a CPA. Right. So they're saying, wait a minute, you have to do that before you get your CPA license, even though your specialization is IT. Right. right? So right. We're, we're still basically saying to you, you have to be someone working in public accounting. And if you don't like public accounting, yeah, go find someone who's a CPA who you'll work under, under, per, uh, under penalties of perjury will right. sign that they... What did they do? What is that changing? You know, yeah, yeah. That's such a. It's, they're still saying, uh, "Yeah, we'll go along. We're gonna, we're gonna, basically, you know, give in to this. That yeah, you could go into IT or uh, you can go into uh, taxes. All right, but really, in the long run, we don't really give a damn about that because no. you're still gonna get that experience requirement. Right. All right. Right. But if you're gonna, you know, someone wants to specialize in IT. Where would you want to get your experience requirement in? Right. Yeah. I okay. mean, yeah. It, well, and and I and I know there's a lot of firms that do have. I I think you'd be hard pressed to find a, a firm that was of a decent size that didn't have like a IT consulting branch That's of correct. what they did. But at the same time, there's plenty. There's plenty to do. I mean, if you're looking, if you get a job in industry, you're not going to. And you're in IT, even uh, they, if you have a financial yeah, specialty. Yeah. And you see, the problem is. They used to get a lot of people from industry, federal government, all right? Yeah. They can't meet the experience requirement. They yeah. turned them off. Right. All right. Yeah. But I just want, you know, the exam that's really doing well now uh -huh. is the CMA exam. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, those people aren't stupid. They see <laughs> that <laughs> no one wants to take the CPA exam in China, you know? Uh -huh. uh, and in China, as long as you get some type of American uh, certification, they will give you a tremendous increase. Okay. Meanwhile, number of people in CMA, it's gone up 60%. No kidding. And wow. what's happening? The CPA, all right? Because we are an ethical profession, all right? Uh -huh. And so what if the numbers are going down, okay? All right? We'll mm. bring in uh, people who want to be accountants or presently fixing shoes. They don't care what they're going to do. That was a stupid analogy, actually. But anyway, <laughs> uh, anyway. Uh, I want to hear some jokes. All right, let's. Yeah, how many jokes you got? Uh, well, uh, I got I got one re just ready to one go. One joke. I got one I, joke. I gave well, you such I, a buildup that yeah, you know, I said this guy's got hundreds well, of jokes. All right. <laughs> And he's written his own book hey. uh, with Jerry Seinfeld. <laughs> oh, geez, yeah, yeah. No, listen. If you if you want to if you want to see more, first off, oh, I'm, I'm a hor you, I'm horribly think? filthy. I don't think that the language in most of my jokes would would be something that you'd like on your podcast on your family friendly podcast that you have here. But listen, do you, okay? Uh, do do you are you are you a member of the ASCPA? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, me, me too. And that's and and again, because I I switched queers, uh, careers from um, junior high math to accounting, and that was in my late thirties. So I knew that I was catching that I had a lot of catch up to do. So one of the things that I did religiously, I became a student member of the AICPA. I started getting the Journal of Accountancy, and I would read the Journal of Accountancy from cover to cover every month because I was like, this is what this is what you got to do to make up a decade. Everybody else in my same station was 10 years younger than me. So I'm doing this. I don't care. Even if I don't understand what I'm reading, I'm doing it. And I read some of the, the most boring things 
ever written by doing that as a matter. And there was this one, there was this one article that I came across that the, the, the headline was IRS wins case uh, wins historic credit fund case is what it was. IRS wins historic credit fund case. And I go, well, I can't skip this article because apparently it's a historic case that's going to change everything that happens about taxes. So I start reading this article and it turns out the name of the defendant in the case was historic credit fund. It wasn't a historic case. It was, that was their, that was their name. And and so, well, so listen, it ticked me off because I put so much, because, because I had to read this horrible thing about a credit. I don't even, I didn't even know what a credit, I still don't know what a credit fund is, but even though it ticked me off that I wasted that time, it also, Phil, it also gave me a dream. And the dream that it gave me is that one day I'm going to open my own business uh, and it's going to be it's going to be a C-Corp. We are never going to pay taxes. We are never going to file taxes. We're going to be so uncompliant with the IRS that they will find us and they will prosecute us. And the name of my company is going to be called Ridiculous Abuse of Power, just so that I can see the headline that says IRS wins case with ridiculous abuse of power. That's all. That's all I want in life. Does that work? Just that. Does that work in Utah? Isn't that a conservative state? Oh, it it kills. That seems like more like a liberal view, is it? The, <laughs> No, no, that's the thing. Every it doesn't matter if you're a, a red state or a blue state. Everybody hates the IRS. So it it's a they're they're universally loathed. I mean, if well, you see behind me, there's the there's Quentin Tarantino, and he there's a lot of people that die in Quentin Tarantino films, and he's found that there's there's four different types of people that you can kill just in a movie, and everybody's going to stay on board. It's Nazis, it's uh, it's KKK members, it's zombies, and it's IRS agents. Those are the four that everybody's on board for just mass Does he destruct- have a movie out on IRS agents? I- no, no, I'm, no. <laughs> But I, but you I know, did, Tar- I did to write to him. If Tar- I'll tell you what, if Tarantino writes a movie where the bad guys are I- IRS agents, I am going to own that uh, in a heartbeat. Here's a good one. All right, my son is a zombie CPA. Okay, that could be a good one. That that's yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah. 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 and and no one no one knows the difference. <laughs> so exactly, that's good. Uh, I, I I always uh, yeah, I always felt that. Uh, I, I would have liked, you know, I can't tell jokes. That's really the problem. I mean, I can say things that are maybe funny, at least yeah. me or whatever. But you know what? I forget jokes. Uh-huh. My wife, she remembers the jokes. And then yeah. if I try to tell a joke, she says, you screwed up the punchline. I said, oh, what did I say? You know, but anyway, let's talk about your comedy church, all right? Oh. All right? And by the way, you're starting to look like a rabbi. I thought I might say that. Uh, oh, okay. Right? But anyway. nice, yeah. Yeah. Oh, it looks good. You, Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I appreciate this. This got it, it got it got longer. And, it got more unmanageable the longer that the pandemic lasted. This is this is much longer than my pre-pandemic beard. So is there any COVID on your beard? You know, no, uh, no, I brush it out every morning. Good, good. So very oh, fine tooth comb. Tell us about your comedy church, okay? And by the way, please state it's not a religious experience. It's no, no. I have to state that before every show. We have really? to have a disclaimer where it's like because I swear there's pe- there have been people that have come to the show thinking that it's church that's funny, and then they see how how not uh church it is, but they're such nice people, they stay for the whole show, anyways, regardless oh, you of how you have an audience. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's oh. that's the thing. We're deep in Utah, so we've been we've been having audiences for months and months and months. Uh, How many dis- people are in your audience? How many people do you get? It, we get well. The room the room maxes out at three hundred and fifty. We've never sold out a show, but I think we've gotten up to 200, 250 on a couple shows. Wow, that's so, impressive. Yeah, and hey, uh, take my card in case. No, yeah, yeah, and hand it out. That well, we're we're looking for sponsors. If you'd like to sponsor a comedy church show, we'll put this is up by Jaeger Jaeger CPA review. I'd have to do some analysis to see if it paid. No, I mean, right? Uh, how many accounts do you have in there? Uh, like, oh, zero. One, well, no, one because me. That's it. It's uh, yeah. The, and believe I bet it or you not, you took my comp- competitor Decker, right? What? No, I no. Who did I? I can't even remember who I took. Roger it, Phillips. It might have been Roger. 
It was just, I just got the books. I no, listen, I bought my four books to study for the exam out of the trunk of another student who decided she didn't want to take the test anymore. So, or no, 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 no. It was because of the IFRS stuff. So she sold me her books because she knew that she wasn't going to be taking it till after the change and her books were for, for pre IFRS stuff. So I bought them. It, it felt like we were doing a drug deal in the parking lot of the, uh, of the college where we were both getting our MBAs from. You so, still have those books with the IFRS in them? I don't. I don't. Uh, no, like I said, you know mine didn't. Oh, mine no, didn't. People, you know, on the book market, I mean, you can make a killing. Yeah. Oh, really? With the <laughs> all the collectors, all the CPA exam review collectors oh, out there? Yeah. yeah. I, I, we tell the people it's still on the exam. So no. we tell them the old books. <laughs> no, but but listen, here's the thing. So so comedy church, it's just if you're in Salt Lake City on a Sunday, look at Wise Guy's website. You can is it come a podcast? to podcast. Is it a podcast? No, no, it's not. It's a live show. It's always been a live show. But you we're have on cameras, you have cameras and everything. We we have cameras, but we don't broadcast it. It's just a live show. You gotta come, gotta come oh. in person to these shows. But but here's a couple of things. I I I am I'm going to say I'm, I am the cartoonist of the accounting profession. Go on Instagram. I'm, I'm, I'm exposure drafts at exposure drafts. All right. Say, is say my, that a little slower in case people go, ahead. go to Instagram at exposure drafts. And that's my cartoon series. Uh, you can also find a, a catalog of those on my LinkedIn page and on my Twitter, which are both Greg kite kite spelled with a Y instead of an I. Um, I also, like I said, I do, uh, I teach courses on CPA Academy uh, about once a month. Um, so you can check those out. Uh, and I'm actually, I, I was on a, I had a, a 10 year accounting firm management podcast called the Thrivecast that I did since 2011. Just, I just bounced off of that uh, podcast uh, mid year 2021, but I'm starting a new one called Oh My Fraud, which is a true crime <laughs> fraud podcast. And oh we're doing my it. Fraud. Oh my fraud. I like that. It's a nice. Yeah, it's decent. And so that's, that's not out yet. That should, we should be uh, dropping our first episodes in uh, early November. And the cool thing about that is that it's through a, a platform called Earmark and they figured out how to get NASBA certification for podcasts. So you can listen to it and then go online. Uh, take a quick uh, quiz about what we talked about and get some, uh, CPE credit. Uh, you know, how many followers? Are you on LinkedIn? Yeah. How many followers do you have? Uh, I have, I don't, I don't keep track. I got, I got 11. I'm, I'm two followers away from 11,000 on Twitter. So uh, 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 we're going to, we're going to send you a note. Maybe you'll let us uh, put those our our this thing on your, uh, what is it called? Your, uh, not the performance. What is it called? Uh, I don't, I don't know. Let's play uh, charade. <laughs> charade. Uh, on your platform. On, my... on your platform. Okay. Can you put, of course, yeah. your name on, on your platform? All sure. Right? Hey, sure. And we'll put your, your name, whatever you want. We'll put it on our platform. Nice. I got 25,000 followers on LinkedIn. Heck yeah. Nice. Yeah. I probably, I, I maybe have 2,500. Well, most of them know are deceased, but uh, <laughs> right. actually that would work out for comedy church. The families might be interested. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. We could do a service for them. Do any weddings on that? Uh, no, no. Uh, but, but my, my partner in comedy church, he, he does want to get us uh, like officially, we, he wants to get us 501c3 for a comedy church. Yeah. So. There used to be an organization that sold franchises. All right. So you could be a 501c3. It was called the Universal Life Church. Oh Remember Yeah. That? Yeah, and uh, yeah, this is how this is how you make this is how you, you pay them sixteen hundred dollars to get the franchise. Okay, uh -huh. then you would take your salary, all right, and deposit it in the Universal Life Church checking account. All okay, right? and those people would take that as a charitable contribution. Oh. Look at okay? that! Wait, you hold on. Is this what's it called again? Universal. You want to know? You know what? These people are all in jail. <laughs> I uh, know, no, that's what I'm saying. No, it's did called you the not Universal. Listen? It was called I'm, Universal Life Church. Did you not hear? I'm doing a fraud podcast. That sounds wonderful. As one of the one of the frauds that we talk about, Universal Life Church coming to the Oh My Fraud podcast you know, this November. Actually, this guy wrote to me. He does something with fraud during the. Uh, you know what? I'll, I'll send you his name. He's okay. looking for uh, you know to do uh, well. You know what? If I get him on the podcast, okay, uh -huh. I, I, I don't know. I'll give you whatever you want. If they can help you, it's on fraud. 
Okay, cool. All right. Sounds good. This is changed from a podcast to just you and me networking now. Let's network, okay? Yeah, All right. yeah. And by the way, we shouldn't really mention that because we're taking advantage of the podcast. All right? Okay. And by the way, probably the only people who will see this podcast are you and me. Yeah, this this is deep. Everybody else has been like, they got out. They got out after the... Yeah, uh, they, they tell me I have traffic on this thing and I try to think, where the heck on the... <laughs> And they say, you know, you have a lot of people watching from Japan. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, and I, I find that hard. Well, you know what? I find that hard to believe. But, you know, this guy wrote to me. This is the guy with this uh, fraud deal. He writes books on fraud. Yeah. Uh, he wrote to me that he's a avid listener of my podcast. Nice. So I figured that's your problem. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice. Yeah. No, I'd love, I'd love to get connected with him. That sounds great. All right. And I'll, Hey, if you can get us on your platform, great. All right. And by the way, you don't have to sell tickets to get on the platform. Okay. okay. It's Good. free trains, free trains. Yeah. Nice. Nice. I like free trains. <laughs> I don't know why they came up with this platform stuff and all that. Anyway, yeah, it's all right. So is there anything else you want to share with me before I leave for the day and you know, <laughs> go, go out there and think about and try to, Try to figure out where your your wife is, who you who you abandoned for her ear uh, surgery. Well, you know, a few minutes ago, I heard some <laughs> something rolling upstairs. Now it's either someone oh. is robbing the house, right, or your wife, wife was home yeah. safely. Yeah, I let's hope. Yes. That's that's kind of the Schrodinger's cat of your upstairs right now. You got to go figure out what what's going uh, on. We don't have any cats. We. You have any pets? You have any pets? I, I do. I have two cats, and one of them I have to put outside, or else he's going to want to be uh, the ma your main guest. And the other one is she's she's shy and doesn't have the upper body strength to jump up on a table. Did the cat ever get angry at you? No, they love me, but but the outside one he loves to play rough. He'll he likes to bite and claw me just for fun. Well, we had one who uh, his name was Fluffy. Okay. And uh, we go on vacation and we leave him with someone for, you know, a few days. All right. He would come back and he'd pee all over the carpet. Oh. He was angry. Yeah. He was mad at you. He's like, I'll yeah. teach you for taking a vacation. Yeah. We yeah. had to change our carpeting at least two or three times. <laughs> oh, you know, he was an expensive uh, fluffy. That, that. But yeah. Yeah. That sounds, that sounds pretty rough. He was rough. a pain in the fluff. Let's just see Yeah. That. Yeah. You yeah. Know, sounds but, like it. <laughs> oh, Greg. Did I get that right? Yes, Greg. Yep, yep, that's the one. That's the that's the right Greg, name. Yep. AKA Jeff, <laughs> AKA the comedy churcher, right? <laughs> yeah. And by the way, open that to all denominations. Oh yeah, it already is. We welcome we welcome all. We tell everybody comedy church, it's not pro-religion, it's not anti-religion, but it's just a little bit anti-religion. So are you making any uh, uh I mean I probably none of my business, but are you making money as being a comedian or is it just a hobby? Uh, yeah, no, it's, uh, well, it depends. Uh, it depends on how you look at it in terms of just doing show. I don't make a whole lot of money just doing straight stand up shows, but do with my experience in stand up, that's what's opened the doors to doing a whole lot of other things, uh, in, in the profession from, uh, emceeing accounting conferences to doing the CP, the CPE classes that I do. Uh, and that stuff is actually quite lucrative. So, and like I said, the thing that, that, that brings those, clients to me for that kind of stuff is the fact that i i'm a i do stand up so now uh you might be interested in getting involved in that evolution okay oh uh, it sounds like an exciting thing you know where you can pick your specialization all right oh. i think once people realize what that evolution is there's going to be a revolution yeah uh, well you know, really there is it now because no one's taking the exam right right there you go all right so your cpa one day will be worth a lot Good. Well, it already is. I I'm, I'm so glad that I got my license, even though I've, I used it on one engagement, uh, for basically one day when I was at, no, 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 I wasn't even licensed then I was working under somebody. Yeah. I've never, I've never actually needed my license to do any of the work that I do, right. but I'm glad right. I have it because the street cred has it changed your life. Absolutely. A hundred percent. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I love, I love my life now and I'm glad I made the changes that I did to leave leave all, all those snot nosed kids at the middle school and become a, a CPA. It's it was I wonderful. hope they're not listening to this using they the probably, word snot nosed they, guys. 
<laughs> well, they probably wiped it, but it's been it's been it's been over a decade since I did it, so they all know how to use a clean. That's some names now. we can call, or <laughs> no? But there's this one kid. I think his name was Justin. At, at, that if I met him in public and he punched me, uh, I'd be like, I probably deserve that for him. I was a great. Thing? What's his I, last I can't thing? remember. Well, I maybe totally we can get him on. Uh, maybe <laughs> on the Japanese. Group That's some. That's some that'd be some good that'd be some good TV right there. And Greg, you don't know this, but turn around, Justin's right here, and he just takes me out. Good <laughs> good way to end a podcast. Yeah, I, that could be one of uh, what's his name's uh, books. You know what? <laughs> By the way, I was reading an article, and then you know, we'll, I'll let you go. But uh, Jamie Lee Curtis, okay, uh-huh. all right, she's coming out with two new Halloween movies. Oh, the last one. All right. Last Halloween movie uh, was she owns the whole thing. All right. Oh, okay. Two hundred and thirty million dollars it grossed. Jeez, wow. Right. Uh-huh. Uh huh. That's amazing. That see, that to me is entrepreneurship. Yeah. Heck yeah. Yeah. For sure. Uh, maybe I'll make a movie uh, about uh, <laughs> uh, Bill Myers. I can make it Bill Myers instead yeah. of Michael. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. I'll work there you on go. the script over the weekend. Okay. Uh, all right. I'll I'll punch it up for you. Hey, I really appreciate you doing this. And I apologize. I'm going to say that I, I, I stood him up on one occasion. Okay. Oh, it, dude, it's uh, not. I, I, it hurts. Uh, but anyway. <laughs> okay. Well, well, as, as the pastor of Comedy Church, Phil, I forgive you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. I feel better now that you forgave me. Good, good. All right. Well, anything I can, can do. You, can you do 10 Hail Marys for me? No, I don't even know. <laughs> oh, oh, those kind, yeah. No, 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 I was thinking, I'm Jewish. I don't know about Hail Marys. Yeah, I, I just, uh, I just actually, if you look uh, on my, actually on all of it, on any of the, any of my social media, LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, I just dropped a, a, a Hanukkah cartoon. Um, so you should, you should check that I think out. You're a little late on that, but uh, I, I'm going to say oh, early. No, I'd like to see, the, yeah. Yeah, but we're, I sell well. That's the thing. Some any of my holiday themed cartoons. I also uh, I've got a. What was the card? Tell me quickly. What's the card? Oh, it's it's got a it's got a picture of uh, of Judas uh, Maccabeus standing in front of his accountant, and his accountant ha- is holding a piece of paper that says budget request eight days of oil, uh, and the accountant is saying, "But last year you only needed one day of oil." <laughs> Is that it? I mean, I think it's funny. Yeah, right? yeah. It, and then, and then the is, caption, the good, caption says, "After the first Hanukkah, after the that? first Hanukkah, <laughs> budgeting became extra difficult for the Maccabees." That's what the that that's what the subtitle is. That's, I like that card. It's good, right on. You should go to go. Listen, go to rubookcreative.com and that? you Let can me spell, it, spell that for me. R U B O O K Creative dot com. They sell, they, they sell greeting. It's all accounting themed merchandise and they sell greeting oh, cards. Right. And, and that's a Hanukkah card that you can purchase through Rubook Creative of my stuff. So yeah, I once saw a real good card uh, and it said, and I, I don't know if I should say, it, it says on the front, Jesus may love you. Okay. Uh, uh-huh. And then you open it up and it says, but the rest of us think you're an actor. Hole, you know? right. <laughs> nice i love it well that's there's a there's a christmas card on there too that i'm also quite yeah, proud of that has has the wise men showing up uh at in the manger with uh mary and joseph and jesus and they're handing over the gifts but one of the one of the magi is saying um we were working off the idea that you were already set up as a 501c3 <laughs> it's the that's good thanks we should discuss this for the whole 45 minutes so, you know. <laughs> I could I could have had like samples to show you, and if you look at this one, yeah, 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 so. yeah you could have gotten rid of that Pulp Fiction thing and <laughs> just so. had those had those behind me, just yeah. shame, shameless self promotion. You, you could have the movie Exodus on there. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah, anyway. yeah. Hey, seriously, it was good meeting you. It was nice All meeting right? you too. And I would say to you, and this would be hypocritical, I hope to meet you one day, but I'm planning on going to Salt Lake City. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love I love Maryland. 
I, I performed at the Laugh Factory in Baltimore uh, oh, really? at one point. Yep. So I've been I've been out there. Great city. It's pretty cool. How Baltimore it's, uh, is great. Great. Yeah. I mean, it's you know what? It did have some problems. Seriously, it did have some problems. Yeah. Well, I, I've 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 learned that from the hit TV show The Wire is that it's not it it's it's got you know. I every- met one of those guys. <laughs> I was on it. I was going on the Amtrak. Yeah. Right? Uh-huh. And I, I'm behind this guy and I, I don't know what his name is. I say, why aren't you on that TV show Homicide? <laughs> because they have a big, they filmed Homicide in Baltimore at the time. Oh, okay. All right. And he says, yeah. He says, uh, Richard Belzer was on the show with me. Oh. All right. And he's a good friend of Richard Belzer. And now he's okay. in Paris. But anyway, uh, he told me his name. I don't remember it. But he says, I've also been on The Wire. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And then you told him that you do a CPA review exam course. And now that guy's a licensed CPA because, because I've like heard that, that you have like I a 93% like pass rate. Oh no, on the we, have, we have 102%. <laughs> <laughs> perfect. Perfect. Can't, you can't. Of us scores. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, take care. Stay well. And uh, no, seriously, I'll, I'll, you know what? I hope I always try to keep in touch with the people. Okay. And yeah. I'm keeping you. I kept you longer than probably you wanted to be kept. All right. Because you're a kept man right now. But That's no, right. It's, right? Yeah. Uh, I am. Okay. I am but, right now. Yeah. Until you finally release me, I am. <laughs> you want me to, uh, what's that song? Please release me. Let me go. Yeah. Actually. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. I take care. And, and hey, we will have, absolutely have a be in touch. summer and you stay safe and stay okay. well. Okay. Okay, I will. You too. Thanks, Phil. You're very welcome. Bye now. Bye-bye.